guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another episode of Halo Top 5, the series where I count down something within the Halo universe. If you guys have watched a lot of my videos, you probably know that my favorite thing in the Star Wars universe is space battles. Well, the same rings true for Halo. I like how quick and dirty they are, how sometimes it's one or two shots and it's over, and I like how the UNSC and the Covenant are so distinct when it comes to tactics, technology, and just generally the ways that they fight. So today we're going to count down the five largest battles within the Human Covenant War, and I don't really have very many rules for this list. The only thing that I'm going to say is that I want one side to be humanity and one side to be the Covenant in each one of these battles. So. I'm not going to include conflicts during the Covenant Schism, for example, the Battle of the Ark, or other events like that. Also, when I say large battles, I'm not necessarily talking about strategic significance. Rather, I'm looking purely at the amount of resources that each side put into these battles. As we go through this video, I think one thing you guys will notice about the Human Covenant War is that for the UNSC to actually secure a victory in space, they need to have an overwhelming amount of ships when compared to the Covenant. I'm not talking like twice as many, I'm talking like 5 to 10 times as many, and even with those many ships, the UNSC will still suffer heavy losses. We see, for example, at the second Battle of Harvest, that a single Covenant ship managed to take down almost a third of a 40 ship strong UNSC fleet. And this fleet wasn't being commanded by some officer just out of school, it was being commanded by Vice Admiral Preston Cole, one of the greatest military minds in UNSC history. To make matters worse, the UNSC had a really difficult time replacing ships as the war went on. When they first met the Covenant, they had things like Valiant Heavy Cruisers, Heavy Carriers, even plenty of Marathon class cruisers. By the end of the war, the UNSC most likely only had a single digit amount of Marathons left, probably only a few Halcyons left as well, and were most likely relying primarily on frigates, which is not a position you want to be in. So that brings us to the fifth largest battle on this list. The Battle of Alpha Arik. This battle has only appeared very, very briefly and essentially as a footnote in the life of Preston Cole. He commanded 117 UNSC ships against 12 Covenant warships. However, even with these overwhelming numbers, the UNSC still lost 37 ships of their fleet. And that's quite a bad loss for humanity at the time. It seems like this was a fairly high tonnage fight though, with the UNSC using Marathons and Halcyons and the Covenant using their CSO class carriers. Unfortunately, this battle is only mentioned in Halo Evolutions, which is a collection of short stories, and Halo Wars Genesis, which is a comic book. It is nice that the UNSC was able to pull out a victory in this battle, especially as it was early on in the war. However, we also see the beginning of a trend which will permeate the UNSC throughout the war. Even if they technically win a battle, what they have to give up is usually fairly great. Number four is surprisingly another victory for the UNSC. This time, however, instead of just winning a random battle in space, they managed to repel an entire Covenant invasion force. Number four is the Battle of Sigma Octanius IV, and notably the UNSC also did not have Preston Cole in this battle. Rather, they did have another military mastermind, Jacob Keyes. The battle over Sigma Octanius actually had two parts. In the first part, a relatively small UNSC force faced off against another relatively small Covenant force. At the first stage of the battle, Jacob Keyes, who at this point was a commander, not the captain that we all would grow to know and love, initiated and executed what was known as the Keyes Loop. I'll save the exact details, but basically Commander Keyes took on four Covenant ships, all of which probably outclassed his single destroyer, destroyed three of them, and caused the largest ship, the carrier, to retreat from the battle. Keyes literally used everything that the ship had available to it. Its nuclear bombs, its archer missiles, its MAC rounds, and then some things in the environment too, including the gravity of the planet, and even the Covenant's own energy weapons. After this first engagement, 48 UNSC ships would rendezvous at the planet to help protect it from the second wave of Covenant ships. They basically formed in a way that would allow them to attack all of the Covenant fleet at once and do a massive amount of damage. However, this also left them open to a devastating first volley by the Covenant. The UNSC used a Cradle class repair ship to absorb the first volley of the Covenant, then taking out most of their fleet with this first round of MAC volleys. This first round would really take out most of the Covenant ships and what was left was mopped up fairly easily. 
Now, technically this battle is a little bit smaller than number 5, but just because we know so much detail about it and because the Key's Loop is one of the most famous moments in the expanded universe of Halo, I figured this had to be number 4. Number 3 is another win for the UNSC, damn, they are on a roll. Surely nothing bad will happen to them during the rest of this video. Anyway, we've got another battle commanded by Preston Cole and one with literally hundreds of ships on either side. On humanity side in this battle, we had UNSC Battle Group India comprised of 162 warships, including most notably the UNSC Everest, a super heavy cruiser and one of the most powerful ships available to humanity during the Human Covenant War. This battle is often called Admiral Cole's Last Stand because he used these 162 ships to take down over 300 Covenant warships. This is an incredible feat. Cole's tactics in this battle really were genius. The first thing he did, which was unheard of by humanity at this time, was an in-system slip space jump. Unlike the Covenant who can seemingly do it at will, he did have to use the slip space beacon and not all of the fleet which jumped made it in the right place and some were picked off by the Covenant, but still, it managed to be quite a distraction and it allowed large portions of the fleet to do serious damage to the Covenant force. The second genius thing that Cole did is he used the magnetics of a nearby planet to make the Covenant plasma weaponry less effective, and this is a strategy I talked about in my video last week where I explained Halo weapons, and in particular, the weakness of Covenant plasma based weapons. The third genius thing that Admiral Cole did was he united humanity, at least temporarily. Insurrectionists who had been not long ago fighting the UNSC in open war actually entered this battle with a small fleet of their own and inflicted serious damage upon the Covenant forces. Now, all of this together wouldn't have been enough had Cole not done his final genius move. The Vice Admiral launched nuclear warheads at a nearby gas giant. This basically turned the planet into a sun and wiped out the entirety of the Covenant force. Unfortunately, it does appear that one of humanity's greatest heroes, Preston Cole, did himself die after this maneuver. However, there are some, at this point unsubstantiated, conspiracy theories which say that he may have actually survived. Alright, so number one is the battle for Earth, and with Earth involved you'd really expect this to be the number one spot. However, this occurred right at the end of the war, and humanity especially was basically whittled down to the last of their resources. I think it's safe to say that Earth was protected more notably by their orbital defense platforms rather than the actual spaceships in orbit. Earth had 300 orbital defense platforms, each one capable of one-shotting a Covenant ship. In a previous video, I did a pretty in-depth analysis on the size of the UNSC home fleet, and I came to the conclusion that they had about 10 heavy cruisers, a couple of larger capital ships, and then about 80 to 90 frigates. The Covenant, who actually stumbled onto Earth accidentally, were quite unprepared for this battle. They had two CAS-class assault carriers, and 13 CCS class battle cruisers, at least at the time of the initial invasion. Later, the fleet of Furious Redemption would also join the battle, primarily attacking Cleveland, and they brought with them there an extra 30 or so ships. If it weren't for just the pure tonnage that the orbital defense platforms bring to this battle, and the fact that Earth is just so important and there was so much action on the ground, I probably wouldn't have put this above the previous two battles on this list, but because of all of those reasons, the Battle of Earth is number two. I'm also really not going to go into too much more detail on it. If you want to learn about the Battle of Earth, play Halo 3, play Halo 2, and play Halo 3 ODST. All three of those games are absolutely amazing, if you haven't played them, you should. Speaking of amazing Halo-based video games, at number one, we have The Fall of Reach. This is, by far, the largest engagement in the Human Covenant War. The Reach timeline is relatively tricky, because the Covenant especially came in different waves, with large forces coming at different times, and the same can be said of the UNSC. I went over this in depth in a previous video, which I'll link down in the description, as I will with the one where I went over Earth's home fleet, but just know generally that the Covenant had over 300 ships, including a CSO-class supercarrier, a over 20 kilometer long behemoth, while the UNSC fielded the entire Epsilon Iridani fleet. This included several supercarriers and heavy cruisers, numerous heavy capital ships, and in total comprised 152 warships. Also, given that the UNSC was fighting on home turf, they did have several orbital defense platforms, 
and other defense bases in space. Unfortunately for the UNSC, this campaign by the Covenant ended up being a total rout, with most of the UNSC forces destroyed, Reach itself completely destroyed, and this just being a total, absolute, annihilating loss for humanity. And really, had the Covenant Schism not happened, this would have really been the beginning of the end. It's also worth noting that despite what you'd think if you played Halo Reach, the ground battles that happened in this campaign were also very significant, with hundreds of Spartan 2s and Spartan 3s involved in various missions. Undoubtedly, the fall of Reach was the largest space battle in Halo history, at least during the Human Covenant War, and I'd say that this one loss makes up for the previous three wins by the UNSC to start off the list. Anyways guys, that's the list. Those are the five largest space battles that happened during the Human Covenant War, at least in my opinion. There were some that could have made the list but didn't. I think that the five picks I chose here were fairly defensible, but I'd still love to hear what you think. Let me know down in the comment section what you thought of this video, if there's a battle that you would switch out, and of course, any ideas that you have for future videos. Thank you so much for watching guys. As always, this has been Eckhart's Ladder. May the Force be with you.